Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and thanks for checking out another episode of the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. You can check out all past episodes on CelebrityJobber.com. Please subscribe. Would love a five-star rating, and please leave a review. These celebrities, we find out, like, if they didn't get their big break, maybe they would still be an average working stiff like you and me. What was their big break? How about a job or jobs that they had before they were famous? Back in around 2007, 2008, you might remember a show on MTV. It was called Buzzin'. And it documented the rise to fame for these two guys, Schwazy and his musical partner, Cisco Adler. And they were just coming up in the scene. And I know you remember some of those songs, Corona and Lime, and of course, Buzzin', which was the theme song to their MTV show. We'll talk to Schwazy about how he landed that show on MTV, his big break. We'll also find out what he's been up to these days. And of course, all the crappy jobs that he had before he was famous. Rapper Schwazy is my guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber Podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Yo, Zito, what's good? What's happening, man? How are you? I'm doing great, dude. Um... I remember way back, I was really into um, the show. I was really into the music. It was like California cool, you know? You guys are on the Vans Warp Tour. So even though you can say it was it was rap, you could also say that you were, you know, kind of appealing to surfer white kids as well. I like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, you hit it right on the nose. I grew up in Malibu, you know what I'm saying? So I grew up in a little beach town. I grew up, like, you know with my best friends being pro surfers and, and skaters. And, you know, so I grew up in that kind of vibe. And so my music is truly just a representation of that. You know, um, I was nervous. I was just talking to someone about the other, the other day. I was like, I was nervous when my album came out, like how actual like hardcore hip hop fans were going to take it, you know? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Cause we're just chilling. We're, you know, uh, I, I was, but to my surprise, like it, it was very accepted on all things. I think, I think the lesson in that is just like whenever you're 100 percent yourself, people just have to respect it. Yes. Be you. Absolutely. I agree with you, because like you said, you you don't know. Right. There's there's manufactured music. And then there's just like, hey, this is me. And what was cool about when when you and uh, Cisco were were a thing early on, it was like, you know, we just took it like it was just like, well, OK, cool. It wasn't manufactured. It felt very natural. I was, uh, you know, like I said, a big fan of the show and I love the oh, music. I love those. You know, I love Dirty Heads. I love that whole scene. Uh, so yeah. I, I really I really thought it was cool. So take me back. First of all. Schwazy, what what do your friends call you? My friends usually call me Schwazy, actually. Okay. Um, I introduce <laughs> myself. What do you know? You know, like when I meet people out, I'll be like, "What's up? I'm Aaron." And then before I know it, within a week or a few days, it's, it sometimes somehow merges back into Schwazy. Okay. Right? All um, right. But, but my given name is Aaron. But I want to I want to call you what your friends call you. I want to call you Schwazy. I want to call you what your friends call you. So. Let's go. So all the way back, right, before um, MTV, before that album, um, tell me a little bit about what you were doing. You were growing up in Malibu. Are your mom and dad um, musical people? Where did all this come from? Right. Um, I actually grew up with my grandparents. I grew up with my grandparents. My, my mom and dad were alive. They were just like young and having too much fun. So right. my grandparents decided to step in and and it was kind of the best thing that ever happened to me i was able to move in with my grandparents it's kind of like a fresh prince of bel-air type of story like i moved out of like a bad situation into malibu with my grandparents who then began to raise me um you know my grandparents my grandfather was a handyman my grandmother as an actress slash you know just entrepreneur but we didn't have a lot of money in malibu so it was funny like we're in this richest town of like ever but like you know we're very middle to low class but still in this paradise you know location so you know i didn't really ever had to think about money but um yeah uh just like one of the only black kids in malibu uh i, I think my grandmother you know since she was from a different generation she 
put me on to Motown early on. Okay. So I think it's like my, my my love for music started off with like you know Stevie Wonder and the Jackson Five and the Temptations, like whatever she was playing, and then also Bob Marley on the flip side and you know stuff like that. So my grandmother, I think, was a big um, just influence and in, on, on what I was listening to, uh, and then. As I got older, I, you know, I, I, I started bands and, you know, I was in musical theory and choir in high school. And then I met Cisco when I pretty much just graduated high school, um, you know, and again, we're in a small town. So Malibu, all the all the talented musicians played at one location back then. And it was called the Malibu Inn. OK, it's changed now. But the Malibu Inn was kind of like a legendary spot. And yeah, over time, just kind of playing in my band and, and playing the Malibu in and linking with Cisco and kind of creating a little vibe um, slowly, but surely stuff just started to bubble up you yeah. know, uh, in the little scene out there. So we're bubbling up in, in Malibu and then all of a sudden MTV comes uh, knocking at your door. Tell me how your life changed, you know, when that all started. I wish it was, I wish it was that simple. Like, Hey, MTV, like, Oh, right. Crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm sure it wasn't right. <laughs> no. Um, well, first of all, it was always my, dream time to have a show on MTV because back then when I wasn't going into high school it's like when MTV really had dope music shows they had like you know um like day of the life and like th- th- there was a couple of like cool music shows Ashley Simpson even had like a show yeah. like about her li- like her life and, the, and, and so as a kid I always kind of wanted to show on MTV and um we kind of pitched it to MTV we pitched it uh, we came up with a pilot and we pitched a show to MTV. Oh, wow. Um, the, the, the first show that we kind of pitched, it didn't really work, but it got their attention. And then so then we shot a pilot and then the rest is history. But yeah, it, it, it took a, it was a good like year of us like courting MTV, meeting them, them, them watching us bubble up and stuff like that before we actually got the show popping. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it, it was really crazy um, because we were just playing shows you know, locally in Malibu and uh, uh, down the coast, San Diego, Santa Barbara. Um, and then uh, this guy by the name of Jordan Schur, who yeah. uh, is like that one of the he- one of the heads of Geffen. He's a big timer. Um, yeah, he was a big timer. And and he he got the vision. You know, it was, that was back in the MySpace days. Right. I remember still going to his office like the first day of him meeting um, m- meeting me and he was going on my, 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 my space at the time. And I was like unafraid. I was, you know, I'll, I'll say this. I was one of the first people to like openly smoke weed on the internet. Right. You know right. And I, I remember Jordan, I remember Jordan looking at it and being like intrigued, but kind of horrified at the same time. Like, wow. <laughs> right. you know, he was like, he was like, I get it. He's like, I love it. He's like, I'm signing it right now. It was like one of those kind of like fairy tale moments. But, um, but yeah, man, it, it's all been, it's all been a, it's, it's, been, it's been a fun ride. So before all this happened, do, would you, I mean, cause you gotta be, I mean, Schwazy, this is like a, a pretty cool story, right? It's like kind of like a, I don't want to say rags to riches, but I mean, that's a pretty cool story, right? I mean, cause you, you guys went to MTV and you always dreamed of having a show and it happened and it, and you blew up, not saying it wasn't a lot of work to get there, but it ultimately, you, you got your dream. So like before all this, you're going to high school, what did you think you were going to become? Were you thinking like, okay, I'm going to be a, I'm going to have my own show on MTV. I'm going to be a rapper. Or were you like realistically <laughs> like, Hey, I'll shoot for the stars, but like really going to study this or that. Do you remember having those kind of talks with yourself? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Great question. Um, honestly thinking about it like i was super focused on doing something in entertainment like i would i i was i was like practicing my signature in like my freaking notebook <laughs> and stuff. like i like I, I i always wanted to be like a big actor like like you know um i remember when i was like 15 i went i was like because when i was a kid i was really into sports you know i was playing you know i was i was really good at soccer i was playing basketball so sports was like my, my family was like you need to go in the out of sports in a way you know and i'm like there's never i'm never gonna do that so i don't know i always in the back of my mind thought i was gonna be an actor honestly really and then music yeah and then music um kind of uh kind of kind of took over when i was in high school um but yeah no i always wanted this i always wanted to like you know, be in front of a lot, a lot of crowds and perform. Like when I was in high school, we had these things, these pep rallies. And even since a young kid, I would host the pep rallies, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah. So I've, I've always liked, like, I'm a Gemini. I like being around people. <laughs> you know. What about your first job, Shwayze? Remember your very first job? You, you had to have a crappy job somewhere along the way. Yep. I, I grew up on Point Doom in Malibu. Um, any <laughs> Malibu people who know. And um, there is a store called Westward Ho. It's not called that anymore. But I, I when I was when I was 15, it was my first job was a bad boy at Westward Ho. But you know, my grandmother, again, my grandparents are really working people. So they instilled like work on me at a really early age. So I've had almost, I've had so many jobs. I worked at Starbucks. I worked in the movie theater. I, 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 I taught kids basketball. Like I gave basketball private lessons. Like you know, I, it's endless. I, I, I was trying to make money anyway. I could, I was delivery boy um, for Spruzos, the pizza spot. Shout out to Spruzos. Um, yeah, man. So I've had a ton of jobs. Your job now is you, you made it. I mean, you you ever think back? Do you ever like kind of think back and say, you know, remember when I was, you know, a kid in high school, I wanted my show on MTV. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. And here you got it. You got a new album out. You've got a new song out with Wiz Khalifa. Do you take a minute to take a look, take a breath and to see how, you know, where you're at right now and, and be like, wow, I, I you know, I did it. Right. You know, I, I really look back and, you know, just hearing you say it and let's talk about, it, I haven't really thought about it like this in a way, but all that stuff, like all those jobs that I had and, and all those failures and all those things has really prepared me for what this job is now. Cause this job is multiple jobs. You know, it's like, if you're an independent artist, like I am, um, yes, you make the music, but you know, making the music is the most fun part. And luckily for me, the most fun part, but you know, there's also then the, the logistics of it, you know, planning the tour, rolling out the album, figuring out who my partnerships are going to be and all these different things. So the job really does have 15 jobs. And, um, I'm just so thankful from my grandparents showing me the work ethic and me having all those shit jobs <laughs> so that I could really appreciate what I'm doing. But yes, I do always look back and be like, wow, you know, I pinch myself when I get to like, you know, when I'm like, oh, dang, I have a studio session tonight. I remember when I was in high school, it was my dream. I, I, like, I, I would dream. I was like, I wish that I could wake up every day and, like, my job would be just go to the studio. Being like, what? I can do this as, like, a living? I'm like, that's it? So the fact that I can do that, I still do pinch myself. And sometimes when I, like, you know, pull up to a show and, and people are stinging in my words, you know. Yeah. As much as I can, I take myself out of that moment. I'm just like, wow, I'm just really appreciative and thankful. Shwayze, your grandparents, they seem like they really made an impact on your life. I mean, you brought them up several times today and are they're still around, correct? They are. Thankfully, they're, 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 I'm very blessed to still have them around in my life. And what do they think about your success? <laughs> they're very proud. They're very proud. They, they, they come to the shows. You know, my grandmother and grandfather are both are streaming in the crowd and hanging out. They're, they're rocking the Swayze merch. It's really cute. Right on. And and you were talking about your parents. They were too young. It was a bad situation for you. And, you know, and that's very common for, for a lot of young parents. But do you have a relationship with them now? Has things gotten better over the years since you're, you've gotten some success? Y yeah, we have. Thank you for asking. We really have. And as, as an adult, you know, um, you know, I, it's like you have like, once you become an adult, you kind of have more um, empathy for the adults in your life when you were a kid, because like you think all adults are just superheroes. But then you get a little older and you're like, wow, they're going through a lot of stuff and it's not as easy. You know, and now I'm a father as well. And, um, you know, I'm very present in my son's life. It's like, you know, my my. my my number one favorite thing in the world to do is be with my kid. And um, again, I, I, I think a lot of that is for my parents not being present, but getting the uh, overwhelming love for my grandparents, I think has just made me such a great father. So I look back and, you know, I'm, I'm just thankful for, for everything. And and yes, my my parents and I are, are on great terms. Um, my mom is now sober and it's all good. Good things. That's all awesome. Things. That's awesome. You know, I knew that this was going to be a good one. I was like, you know what? I haven't, heard, I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't listened to some, you know, Shwayze in a long time. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I, I'd like to talk to him. I think this is going to be a good one. And, and I was right, man. You're, you're a cool dude. I was, uh, I really, I'm really happy that I had a chance to talk with you today. I want to promote your, your new single with Wiz Khalifa out last month. It's called Smoke, yeah. Smoke Too Soon and a uh, new single West Coast, which is out, uh, which is out now as well. And an upcoming album, Shwaycation, releasing, uh, uh, September 13th. What about all your socials? Can you plug all your socials for me? Yeah, Instagram 
at Shwayze, um, S-H-W-A-Y-Z-E, and uh, Facebook, all those good things. But also, I wanted to give you a compliment. I, I really appreciate this, uh, this interview as well. You're killing it, and I uh, love talking to you, my man. You're a good guy, man. You're a cool dude. You're, you know, you're just... Uh you're, you're exactly who people like me want to talk to because you're real and you're not, um, you know, kind of hiding. You're giving people, you know, a little piece of you. And I think that's what they're they're looking for. So good luck with everything. And, and thanks so much for talking to me. Of course. And, and, and where are you based? You're based in? Swayze. I'm in St. Pete, but I did radio in Fort Myers, Florida for about 20 years. And the Sugar Shack sessions that you did yeah. uh, is, yeah. you know, about a stone's throw from the station. Uh, and I'm a big, oh, cool. f- big fan of what those guys do there. And your appearance there was absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you you had an opportunity to check it out, but man, sounds so great there. Oh, you're so kind. Yeah, I did check it out. I love the Sugar Shock. I love what they're doing over there. It's the coolest people. And um, yeah, they're really cool to have me over. Um, I'm, 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 I'm St. Pete. I, so I'm, I'm going on tour. Um, the permanent vacation tour and uh, October 13th through the 19th, I'll be in Florida, October 13th, Jacksonville, October 17th, D-Lind, Melbourne and Stewart. Unfortunately, we're not coming to St. Pete on this one, but I think I'll be there in December with Little Stranger. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I'll be definitely keeping an eye out for you, man. Thanks so much. Thank you, Zio. Appreciate All right, you. Swayze, take care, man. This guy, by the way, 39 years old. He sounds like a kid, doesn't he? Uh, and he was a kid when he got that show on MTV. It was back in 2008, and I know you can remember some of those songs. Buzzin' and Corona and Lime. It's the name of the MTV show as well, Buzzin'. And, you know, sometimes you, you think about, you know, hey, did you have a backup plan, this and that. But when you're younger, you tend to not have a backup plan. You're just kind of going for it. You're in the moment. And I think that's kind of where Swayze was. I mean, he wanted to be a performer. He wanted to be an entertainer. He wanted to be an actor. And so that's kind of what his focus was, you know, all in high school. And uh, he made it happen. It changed his life in 2008 when he went and pitched MTV. The idea for the show Buzzin was about him and his friend Cisco Adler, who's his musical partner. It was kind of about how they were coming up in the business and how they were starting to get a little bit of a buzz and it documented their journey. It was really, really cool. I think the coolest part of this guy's whole story was, you know, he started out saying, I was raised by my grandparents in Malibu. You know, my parents were not in a good place at the time. They couldn't raise me properly. So I had to, you know, go and live with my grandparents. So it seemed like his mother had a little bit of a problem. He said uh, she is uh, straight now. He's got a good relationship with his mom and dad who are sober and back in his life. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing and and something that's, you know, kind of common for younger parents who aren't ready to become parents. And it seemed like that was the situation with Swayze when he was younger. But look, he turned out pretty damn good, didn't he? was a great story, and uh, thank you so much for listening to the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. We stream on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe. Would love a five-star rating and leave a review. Past episodes are up on CelebrityJobber.com, and you can follow us on Instagram, CelebrityJobber underscore podcast, and on YouTube.com slash the at sign celebrity jobber what would have become of aaron smith if he didn't become schwazy i think his grandparents would have had him become a pretty successful guy nonetheless thank you so much for checking out another episode of the celebrity jobber podcast until next week i'm jeff zito